Jesus and it's Eli, Eli Lama Sabathani and as if to say I want you to know that these are the most sacred words that have ever been spoken by Jesus and I want you to pay attention to them so I'm going to give you his very words my God my God why hast thou forsaken me what else do I have to face because now God has moved away from me can I preach like I feel it can I tell you something this is the deepest point of any gospel because this is where revelation and experience meet because when you begin to question God because you've been stretched outside of everything that you can think of and now I gotta question God my God why why hast thou forsaken me it's the point where revelation and experience comes together that's why when you think about revelation and experience you gotta take a quick run to Lazarus if thou had been here my brother would not have died and if I had not given you that experience you wouldn't get the revelation that I am the resurrection and the life in order to get revelation you got to have some nasty experiences I wish somebody'd get it you're not going to get revelation if you're not going through something somebody must have prayed for me because I feel like a child I feel like I'm 22 years old Lord have mercy somebody reverse the gauge can I preach like I feel it I know who you are and I know what you did not do and that is you were not here for my brother and there is no meeting place for revelation and experience where there is no question my God my God why hast thou forsaken me so the question provokes the need for the other side of God to be revealed in the pain so he has to forsake me in order for me to see him as my grace is sufficient I won't give you what the deliverance is you want but I'll show you the other side of me and that is whatever I let you go into I'll give you the power to come out of it I feel like lifting him up can I take a praise break for a minute thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus the same way I can see the revealed power of God because he only gives revelation to the people that he are close to his enemies don't ever get revelation so that's why Mary and Martha had to suffer the death of Lazarus for God to give them revelation he said roll away the stone and Martha hollers he stinketh for he's been dead four days and Jesus said did not tell you if you wouldest believe I would show you the glory of God touch somebody for the second time and say God is getting ready to show some glory in your life he had to die for Martha to ask the question that married revelation with experience but unlike Martha who received her answer on this side Jesus's last words were a question to God can I preach like I feel it you and I would have sat around and we'd have come up with something smart hanging on the cross with everybody watching us we'd have tried to say something noble or something we practiced in church we got a whole lot of practicing folk that aren't spiritual at all if you're hurting you're hurting if you got a question for God you got a question if he's stretching you he's stretching you and I can't sit down and try to fake the funk 
when I'm not feeling good about what's going on what's going on Lord but you and I would have said something like no weapon formed against me shall perish or God is love or weeping may you know how smart we get and door for a night but I'm crazy enough to say I'm hurting I'm broken and I can't figure out how God is doing so Jesus dies asking questions and we learn that he's not only take on our flesh and blood but he took on my nervous system why hast thou forsaken me he came not only to give us answers but he came to ask my questions every time I get on my knees and I question God it's Jesus helping me to question so I can grow to the next level I feel like preaching a question is always weaker than an exclamation but Jesus did not exclaim he wanted to know why have thou forsaken me can I talk a little bit here the emphatic word in the Greek was me me can I preach that for a minute I'm not anybody else I did everything you said I'm not like weak men I stood up for all you wanted I called your name I raised the dead in your name I healed the sick in your name and everything you asked me to do I did it why are you forsaking me if everybody it should have been me that you stepped in here to get have you ever felt like you have paid your tithes you you have paid your dues you have worshiped and praised God every chance you had you come to the house when you're sick in your body and you want to know with all you do why is everybody on your case why is everybody trying to hurt you if you want to hurt somebody it shouldn't be me because I tithe all the time now my mama is sick and my daddy is sick and my son is in prison and I'm in church all the time my God my God why I've been nothing but faithful I've been nothing but true and you do not abandon the faithful because I know you are not like that so now the closest thing to hell on earth is to feel abandoned by somebody that you think loves you I wish I could preach get somebody high five say it broke me up when I found out the person didn't care because I thought they loved me I thought they'd do anything for me but in my darkest hour I can't find them his loneliness is now complete he is without man companionship at Gethsemane and now he can't even feel the presence of God he is not just wondering about the will of God now he wants to know where is my God I'm wondering about God himself the darkness on the outside is one thing but when the darkness comes on the inside that's another thing he dies before he dies because the question is the Magna Carta of counseling why why if you can tell me why I might get through this if you can tell me why I might overcome this but I don't understand why have thou left me alone give somebody a high five say I've been there I've been there just before my next level 
I've been there. Can I preach like I feel it? Notice what Jesus, he's not asking his friends, why has God forsaken me? He is not asking his mama, why am I forsaken? He's not asking the deacons. He's not asking the church. He feels empty, but he's still talking to God. I feel the Holy Ghost. Whatever you do, wherever you are, don't stop talking to God. I don't know what you're doing, but I'm still talking. I don't know how to take it, but I'm still taking it. I don't know how to live through it, but I'm still holding on. Can I preach to you? It's one thing to praise him when you feel an anointing, but when you don't feel God anywhere and still crawl up in his house and say, I don't know where you are, but I'm giving you the glory. I can't find you, but I'm dropping off my praise. I don't know how to see you, but I still want to tell you, you are God all by yourself. I want to know, can I praise him when I don't feel him? Can I praise him when everything is going crazy? That means I'm moving to the next level. Can I preach like I feel it? Give somebody a high five and say now he is more formidable than he's ever been because when he can lift his hands up and give God glory when he can't even feel God when you can praise God and not even feel God the devil has got to get his hand off you because here's what the devil say he got to be crazy because that's some crazy praise he got to love God that's some crazy love he's got to worship that's some crazy worship where you don't feel him but you still praise him where you don't know where he is but you're still sending out a word of praise oh I feel it in here it's over now it's over now John said it's finished get somebody high deaf high and say neighbor don't leave yet I might be down in the grave but now I have the keys to death hell and the grave three days later guess who popped up Jesus popped up and opened his mouth and said all In heaven and in earth is right here. Give a mighty high five for the fifth time and say, neighbor, it's your resurrection day. You've been to hell. Folk don't know it. Folk can't understand it. But God told me to tell you, you're coming up. You're coming up. You're coming out. You're coming through. You're going to make it. And oh, 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 oh. It's my turn now, devil. It's my turn now. It's my turn. Give some money high five for the second to the last time. Say it's my turn. It's my season. It's my time of revelation. God is going to lift the veil off you and show the world. I've got somebody. I've got somebody. I've got somebody. I'm closing. Give somebody a high five for the last time and say, Neighbor, do you know what's next? You.
You're next! You're next! You're next! You're next! And ain't It's not about what you have, it's about who you are. And to operate in your purpose is to be protected by God. And as I close, I may close two times, but as I close for the first time, you have to always ask yourself, was Joseph ever at risk? Was he ever at risk? He was in a conspiracy. His brothers conspired to kill him. Put him in the pit. Reuben talked them out of it. Sold him to the Ishmaelites who sold him to the Egyptians end up in Potiphar's house and I don't know what man I don't know I, I ain't seen the one yet that wouldn't have everything Potiphar had in his own possession and he might have said no one time two times three times but I don't know too many men who would have said no three times four times but he held to his integrity and if anybody should have complained about being in prison, should have been Joseph. But the truth is, God intended for him to get to the palace. That was his purpose. And so it begs the question, was he ever at any time really at risk? And I suggest to you, that as long as you're walking in your purpose and in the destiny that God has outlined for you, it seems like you're having a bad time, and you may be, but you'll never be at risk until the fulfillment has taken place. I'm closing for the second time. Understand that the greatest time that was spent in Joseph's life was not in the pit, was not in the prison, but most of his life was spent in the palace. I reckon that the suffering of this present time is nothing, nothing. Compare to the glory that shall be revealed in us. We're going through some things now. But when the resurrection comes, that's how your life is going to be from that day forward. Somebody the Lord is calling. He's calling you now. And he's saying it's time to give your life to him. And if you haven't experienced him in his death, burial, and resurrection, I think you ought to come now. Backslider, come home. Come home. Come home. Come home. Come home. Come home. Because he lives.